and we are back for another session of the Australian Floral Art Association Convention for 2021 New Visions. This session brings to you the demonstration and workshop from Parul Swarup from India. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Parul and I have my notes on the other screen so I'm just going to be sort of side on while I, I read through them. Parul's passion for flowers dominates every part of her life family, home, hobby and profession. From decorating her home for both special and everyday events to travelling the world to take part in shows to organising workshops, Perul never stops learning and experimenting in floral designs of all styles. Her keen sense of colour and texture have led to experimentation in using Indigenous material from the Indian continent to create groundbreaking, innovative techniques and designs, some of which you will see in her demonstration today. Perul started flower arranging at a very young age, watching her mother decorate their house with flowers of, for all of the times. She joined the Pushba Bhattan Friendship Society in 1990. After taking part in many festivals and shows, Perul qualified as a national judge in 2015 and a national demonstrator in 2018. She studied with many overseas tutors and has gained the European Master's Certificate, and that was in 2016. Her knowledge and attention to detail is exemplary. She knows there will be numerous ways to apply the techniques that you see today in your own future floral designs. Please join me in welcoming Parol Swarup from India. Namaste. Namaste to you all from India. Good afternoon, ladies. In Australia, it's early morning for us here. And in these unusual times, this is a different format that I'm working on. And uh, I must confess, this is my first demonstration, uh, a Zoom demonstration. I haven't done any till now, but I'm very delighted to be invited to the AFAA convention by Kim Bailey and Madhusha and I, um, uh, uh, by uh, your association, the New Wales, uh, New South Wales Floral Association of Floral Artists. So I'm delighted to be here and I will share with you some of the techniques. And mostly this whole demonstration is based on techniques uh, of paper making and making paper with uh, different materials. I am going to use, I'm going to show you how to make some glue at home. A lot of us have made it in our childhood, but it is almost a forgotten technique. When I was getting prepared for my Wafa convention, that time I used this homemade glue and I found great success with it. So now, First, let me first tell you that I will be showing you different uh, ways how to make paper out of shredded paper, then out of jute, then out of shredded leaf, and all with this homemade glue. And in case you do not want to use homemade glue, you can of course use your wood glue that is available very freely. So the movie, I'll just, I have recorded a small uh, movie on to detail how to make the glue. That is absolutely organic and biodegradable, made at home from home kitchen ingredients. So what I have to do, is I have all-purpose flour here and I am going to take 50 grams of the flour. The proportions are given in the book that I have set and I have to blend it with 500 ml of water. So first what I do is take a bit. My measuring cup is 125 ml. I pour in this and make it a nice blend. So I stir in this water in this flour. 
to a very smooth base, if they are lumps, our glue will become lumpy too and will not cook properly. This we pour it in our big bowl, all of it. And now we add the rest of the water that is required. So for 50 grams of the flour, I am putting in 500 ml of water. My measuring cup is 125 ml. And then on slow heat, I start stirring and cooking this mixture. And I cook for 15 minutes. So you see my mixture is beginning to thicken a bit. It's almost like making custard. A lot of us have done this in our childhood. Made glue when our mothers had taught us. Now, of course, everything is off the shelf, even in India. And people have forgotten this sustainability glue. It works quite well. It's very safe, especially if you want to do any craft work with grandchildren. Surprisingly, this glue does not get moldy. It did not. I don't add any sugar. I don't add any vinegar or salt. Dry out and become thicker as it cools down. So this is your glue. Sure to stick. Everything. I wonder, broken hearts? No. We don't break hearts. We florists, floral artists, flower lovers. the glue ready to use. It's a bit transparent as you can see. I have given a set of these nets, these nets. So I keep the net and actually with the homemade glue, I don't really require to put Vaseline. In my book, it is written that you put Vaseline. Then I have taken some colored paper, shredded it. And you know, this can be according to your theme. That is the best part. You can use, a, you can make special paper. You can add sequins. You can add some silk. You can add whatever. And you add at this stage. Then you put the second net that has been provided on top of this. And all you need to do is put this glue on one end and with a spatula with a with the spatula or something like this rubber thing anything to smoothen it out you spread it and you will not believe that it actually works this whole thing if you feel the need for a little more glue, you can add it here. You can keep adding and all the excess glue you remove at the end. So I can just wipe it off. And now what I need to do is take this and hang it out to dry. Different climates will take different timings for drying, but an overnight usually does the trick. And then what we do is we hang it to dry in a cool place, in a dry place. And then you, when you will peel it off like this, you will see that you get paper ready like this. Can you see this? this paper. Here I have added a little bit of silk, threads, some dried flowers as well over here. So this is my first 
demonstrations demonstration i wish you could have worked with me but because we lacked the glue either wood glue or things but you surely try and please get back to me with any queries any doubts that you have i even tried i even tried to shred some shola roll that has been given in your kit and made paper out of that unfortunately my dog he ran away with the whole sheet he thought what am i so busy with why can i not be there with him all the time so he runs away and tears up the sheet and i didn't have time to make it again but with the shola you will need to apply a little bit of vaseline or some oily thing because this doesn't peel off that quickly but surely it peels off now i'm going to show you how i will do with jute my friend preeti whose demonstration is going to come up next after me has a whole supply of jute you can order jute or in every type of form from her and look at this this is jute fibers slivers that we just pull apart lay them in the same way on this net by the way the net that i have sent for you can be reused after you have removed the sheet which peels off quite easily you can just wash it and keep it and dry it and reuse it or look for something similar in your country in my country this net is a mosquito net or we put it on our windows we make so here again i am using two types of these fibers laying them like this then again i put another net, the net on top put the glue these are various different materials that you can use i had even inserted a photograph which doesn't really spoil and made a sheet i wish i had brought that i wish i had brought that to show you that in my jute sheet there was a photograph inserted and so it can be used to make special gifts wraps cards anything you want again this whole thing will dry up overnight in australia where it is very dry it will dry up even more easily and then you can peel it off and let me show you what the sheets look like this so you can see some glitter in it i have put some sequins and look what i have inserted i had put in some skeletal leaves from people and all this sequins that you can see so you can see there is endless possibilities and customizing and making this and this all this fiber comes from my dear friend preeti sarda's factory she has various colors and innumerable textures to work with so now this is with uh, so we completed shredded paper and then we have done uh, with jute slivers and fibers now i move on to show you how to do with fresh green leaves so what you have taifa over there this is my taifa so we also have this taifa growing in the marshy ponds and lands in our bengal and you take a here i have taken this kenzin pin holder and one by one i will try and shred it now these sheets have been included in your kit i have included made two sheets first we shredded it like this all of it 
then you leave it to dry out. So it kind of dries overnight. And then I'm going to show you how to make paper out of this very shredded taifa. So I have again put this two sets of net is all that you need. And here's my dried taifa. I can further cut it down a little bit. And if I make it, it depending on what I'm going to use it for. Because if you want more transparency, then you just add less of the shredded taifa. See, I spread it all around. I like the rough edge finish that comes. Ladies in your kit, are you able to find the taifa sheets that are sent to you? The net that has been provided for the workshop? Well, we plan this workshop months, in fact, years in advance. Madhu had asked me to come to Australia for a demonstration right in February 2020. Unfortunately, we waited. Maybe things will improve, but the borders were closed. I didn't mind coming for even one week. I love your country and I love you all, all my floral family, friends. See, now we spread it like this. Again, enough. As I mentioned, if you do not want to go ahead with the wood glue, uh, you, uh, with the homemade glue, you could use wood glue. No problem over there. And again, this is how easy it is. You just hang it out to dry on a line with two clips and it'll be ready. In India, we had even provided the clips so that ladies could go back to their um, rooms and do it. Now here I have a sheet ready for you. So this is my sheet here, which has been dried out. So I will show you how easy it is to peel it. Can you see this? So easily it came off. Now the other side, you just hold on to it and work your thing and let it come off. So here is the sheet. I had really used less so that it would dry out very fast. But you can imagine, these are the sheets that have gone to you. And since the Typha dries out to this brownish color. So we thought we can keep it natural if you want in your design. And this is the sheet that I have sent for all of you. So I sprayed it a bit so that it would stand the time that it took to travel to your country. It was almost five months in advance. We have posted to you and it took a lot of effort on Madhu's part to receive the parcels and then send them to you. So now ladies, I would like to show you uh, a short, very short clip uh, on how I had used this jute paper. And let's go to this design. So here I have used this sheet made from taifa. And the other side, of course, I have used some of these chips, uh, the shola chips. These have been sent to you in the kit. 
I have used a chicken mesh to give a little firmness. Use this typha, sprayed it to just give it a little variation in color. And here's my design with typha. Now I would like to show you another one that I have done. We'll move to our second design. So this is this big sheet that has been created again by using the typha, very similar to the sheets that I have sent you. So two sheets I have sent you, you can combine them by joining on the top with some wire and use it. And of course, just to give a little more interest and variation in the design, I have used, these are all Shola cubes, which has been sent to you. And I just added for a little variation, some of these silk cocoons. And uh, well, these uh, wood. And here is, a flower that I had made with crepe paper. I just wanted to show fresh flowers, dry flowers, handmade paper flowers. So I have used this skill. Thank you. Now we move back. Now we will move back to the screen. Yes. Now I will show you the movie where the jute fiber sheets I had used to create some larger flowers, some more interesting. Um, so it's some more interesting designs. Just a short film this time, I promise only for 30 seconds. Some of you may have seen this film these uh, installations at the Wafa show in India. Now I will quickly show you the movie on pulp making, on how you make pulp at home. So what you do is you take tissue paper, you can use brown paper, you can use newspaper, or you can use the much wanted at the beginning of the COVID times, toilet paper, because that comes the cheapest, you kind of shred it, soak it overnight. And then all you know, then I will just show you the movie, how it is done, very simple, how to make pulp out of the papers. There is paper pulp or slurry. Bits of tissues and soak them overnight in water. And then all we have to do is take this mixture of water and soak tissue and put it through a grinding, blending machine. We can soak newspaper bits also. Also, brown paper bags can be used which have no plastic coating on it putting this mixture of tissue in a blender the, and now ladies you can take out the ring the wooden ring i'll give you time you take out the wooden ring and this jute string this jute string is beautiful because it has some nice gold effect in it also. So this one you take out. I'm waiting for you all to take it out and put a little knot on one end of the ring. You can use it in many shapes. After we finish this, I will show you how I have used the pulp to so, uh, coat it on different surfaces. So ladies, I begin. Have you all got your rings and your jute string with you? I assume. 
that you have it all with you. And we start wrapping it nice and tight. So a little crisscross first if we do on one direction and then we move to the other side like a cross. It becomes easier. But while you're wrapping, do not forget to do the ends again and again. One can do on rectangle wooden frames. You can do it on wooden sticks. So this is how the wrapping is. I have some completed one right here to show you. So here at the end, it's, I've done it quite dense and put it right up till the edges on, both, on all four sides. So it becomes nice, dense for my design. And then with my pulp that is ready, Here, this is my pulp. I just have stirred it a bit. You can do it with a spoon, but I like my hands. I like to use my hands. I like it to get a little bit wet. And this is my ready thing ring. And all I'd need to do is dip it in this and pull it out. And so it gets coated. Now, if you, if you don't want it so thick, you just need to touch it again and the thing will wear off. So depending on what kind of transparency you want to create, look at this. Can you see? You can dip it again. Now, supposing your pulp is not too thick, you can let this dry out halfway and then go and dip it again. So then you get really a thick pulp. It looks so thick, but once it dries, it will look, it will become more transparent. Remember when you're pulling it out, then this side is coated, but this side has nothing. So if you want coating on both sides, then you wait a bit and not now, you have to wait for this to dry out a, quite a bit and then do a quick dipping for the other side. There you go. It's quite simple. Trust me, we would have had all this ready for you at the convention. Even if I was not able to come, Madhu had promised me that she would do the pulp and have it all ready for you. And now you see my dried ones. These are all dried. So you can see there is less transparency on this side. On this side. And see this one. And then what you do with a knife or a scissor, you need to cut this off after you have finished. So you have to cut everything. Once it's completely dried, again in this, you can have, you can add a tint of color to your pulp. Your pulp, when it's with brown paper, it looks different. With newspaper, it looks very gray. You can add some sequins in it when you have made the pulp. So it will all get coated with sequins. And here I have one. Once I have cut it all around, I must check if every thread is cut at the rim. All I have to do is gently push it out. And here is my ring. Here is my circle of paper very easy to use, very interesting to use a tube dinner. And I can use it like part of my structure because these holes that I have created, these spaces, they hold tubes very well. 
your water tubes, they go and keep very well. I have separated out in this case, see my, my tubes can go in and get inserted. This is a little thicker, but they hold. It's like this, it holds very well the tubes. So this is again, can be used as part of creating structures. This is when I have taken the orb, these two circles apart. You can do that as well. You can do halfway, endless possibilities. You have a lot to, you can keep experimenting. Now I will show you a small design that I have created using this male same paper. And fixing the tubes in there. Endless possibilities of tinting colors, everything. And here what I have done is wrapped the string. It's mostly jute string that I have used. And there is a reason why I use this jute string because the paper pulp, the paper fiber comes into contact and settles very well. They interact very well. So you get all this. So I've taken some branches and here I have created a uh, Again, another structure that you can use in your floral designs. I have also used fishtail palm from the fruit. You get this stringy part. And what I did was wire this up in places. Here it is wired. And then wet it. I put it in the pulp again to give this interesting texture. In the movie that I had shown you earlier, I have used these things just to give a little wave, a little more interest, endless possibilities, like I said. Now this big one was wrapped on a used uh, spoke, a sp a spoke of a bicycle wheel. The whole wheel I used and just the ring of the wheel and did this and I have used it in my, and then give accented it with a little bit of gold to give interest. And like I said, it has so much, all this netting to places to insert flower material, to insert tubes, anything. Now, there were two parts to my entire design or to my entire demonstration. So the second part is to deal with Shola. So the second part is to deal with Shola. Shola is kind of a crop that is uh, like a cash crop of West Bengal. It is an annual crop. So it's reusable, renew renewable and available to us very easily. It is the lightest wood available, shola wood. This is how the sticks come. This is the reed or the shola wood. I have a small movie that I have made, especially for your convention, for your workshop, which I will soon screen so you get a lot more details. But can you see this shola wood? It's got a very, very thin layer of brown covering. It's so thin. It's like a few millimeters only. And it is lighter than thermocol. It is very malleable when it is moist. And the technique, the art is to cut this wood and make it into these thin sleeves, sheets. Now this, is an art, it's a craft done by special people in our country and especially our side of the world in West Bengal. It's all in West Bengal. 
So there are many, many designs that are traditional, which you can make out of shola, traditional designs. And then of course, now shola is used to make contemporary designs, flowers. And I have some installations that you will see later on there. I have put in a little bit of contemporary design, some traditional design. So now I am introducing this shola through a movie to you, which I have specially compiled uh, for, your, uh, for your workshop, for this convention. Espera. It grows in West Bengal like a weed, like a big reed and matures almost by the monsoon where it is and in very marshy areas. There is heavy monsoon in West Bengal, Calcutta, where we live. And here you can see how they pull it out, clean it, bundle it, and then it is sent to the market to be used. It's a craft which is more than two, three hundred years old. Shola is as light as thermocol. Here you can see that the weed, the big reed turns brown and they take out the first layer to reveal the white inside the stem. The brown part is also used. These big flower type I have given in the kit. And here are women who laboriously work for hours together to make these flowers that are sold in the market and used by many diff uh, for many different reasons for decoration part of the culture work that is done in bengal like the pujas the durga puja celebrations there are many artists and craftsmen and women who deal with this. A sharp knife is all that they need to work with. A really sharp knife with a very steady hand and you will see them create wonderful artistic objects of art and flowers that can be used because they finally need to sell it in the market to earn. See how beautifully it has been made. Since the thickness of this reed or the shola stick is only about one inch in diameter, they join it together to form a broad uh, structure to work out these. Some of the things that are made can be up to four to five feet tall. You will see like this, these decorations that are used and especially for the religious purpose of Durga Puja. Now this image could be almost four feet high and more. Shola craft is not really a craft, it's almost art work. These are three dimensional images made by just gluing these reeds together and then working on them. Hours of laborious work goes into it, deftly using their sharp knife, that's it. The reed dries up very easily. You can see how quick they are at making, cutting the reed, which is shola. Unfortunately, the reed that I sent you got taken away by the customs. The reed they sharpen and make it into this parchment kind of paper, which then further is used to cut out, make cutouts to make the flowers. All the parchment type of 
sheets are bundled together and then made into various shapes and leaf of the flower and many 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 types of flowers they reproduce it's quite brittle so they need to spray water to soften it and then they keep wrapping it and making it like this just remember when you are using that roll you can mold it and shape it by moisturizing it by just spraying some water on it this craft is done mostly in the by the women and the men of villages around west bengal calcutta or kolkata as it's called now where i live india is a country to experience with all your senses smell taste sound they touch everything possible shola panels used in the backdrop in my own home thank you for watching this film i compiled for you you enjoyed this movie and you got somewhat the feeling of how much labor is there in making shola products whether it is flowers or whether it is the traditional shola uh, things that are made for us and uh ladies now we begin the last bit um before i begin let me show you two designs that are very contemporary that i have used to make uh, to used the shola wood to make here this is a very contemporary structure that i created out of shola wood this is the reed or the stick shola stick that i have used and i have put it against a wrought iron frame as you can see the little base here and these are small um shola slices cut very thin stuck on little uh plastic balls all these are on plastic balls then i have inserted tubes tied tubes and completed my arrangement so you can see the traditional shola work all traditional shola material but it has been used in a very contemporary way now we move on to the next design right here this is made these rolls have been created from the roll the shola roll that has been packed and sent in your kit so these were cut out and put on a mesh very indian colors of flowers marigold here the previous one had gerberas and that's it given a very very contemporary look to the shola wood the shola sheets that i have used over here all these rolls so now you can see how many different types of uh installations you can make structures you can create go on and of course there are many many types of flowers that are there that are made by the craftsmen of bengal i will show you some of them right here this is the beginning of every flower a sheet and you saw that reed they cut it so finely using a sharp knife into this roll and that's when i am not showing you the technique to make flowers because these are available in our country and now internationally you can order them you can order them from amazon it will really encourage our crafts people to have but you can create different shapes you can create different types these are lotuses that have been created 
Shola dyes very easily, dyes as in color dye. You just add a little bit of watercolor, some acrylic fabric color in water and you can dye them. All small sizes of the similar lotus. Here is a hibiscus that they have created. And you know, they have not used glue really, there's all string that they use as you can see from the movie, in the movie. Now let's get to our kit, to the last part of the demonstration, where I will give you some time to bring out all the material that has been posted to you, which Madhu has taken so much effort in parceling everything that she received. Some of it re reached in pristine condition, some of it didn't, but it's all right. Like the sh Shola read that I tried to send it to you, that couldn't pass. And here you can see these are the, these have been dyed. Here the Shola has been dyed. The inner ones have been dyed brown. And then this is the maroon that you have received. And the brown over here, this flower also has no glue in it. It is just tied by the strings. What I usually do is I insert a wire or a, oops. Sticks, satay sticks like this, and you are ready to use. Ah, here. So this is also easy to use. You just kind of put a little bit of glue if you want and carefully, and your flower is ready. Can you see these big flowers? You will get the feel of the reed. Because here, some of the leaves, some of the petals of this flower has the brown covering is still there. This one. This is naturally brown like this. They have used combination. Of course, this also can be dyed completely. Then we have some chips that I have sent. These Shola chips. You can make any form. Here, ladies, I'm giving you complete freedom to do whatever, however you want to arrange this. We, uh, Madhu has been kind enough to send this vase, very nice vase, brown vase to you. And I have taken the two sheets that have been sent to you. I've just rolled them up and made a little base. You can use as you want. I would like that each one of you who's doing the workshop, we, if we had held this workshop in Sydney, we would have provided you with a lot of fresh flowers to work with, with foliage and other things. But unfortunately, because of our times, but we are still lucky enough to hold this. So let's go ahead and each one creates their own little design and then we can share it.
again here on the screen again. So I have done this very contemporary design using the traditional flowers that they have made. That beautiful. Yes. Up to now, I had not used a single flower for my installation. So this is the first one. I think the video is there on, you know, you just take the, sh the sheet has been cut into different leaves and put together like this and then insert a little pin in it. Pin, no, sorry, wire. A wire that is as thin as a pin like this. So you get a ready stem. Very easy to work with this material. Have several of these. Even the flowers that I have sent to you, even those you can wire them up and use them. See. And then I have made this a little bit cascade type, several of them I have used. So this is one of my designs, my installation that I have made with minimal work, with minimal material used. Everything can be reused. This philodendron in India, which grows in my garden, these leaves last like this for a long, long time. Even if I just put them in minimum water, they can last a long time. All this is all reusable. So you see, this is called sustainable floral art that you can keep using your structures, keep using your designs, keep redoing. So Shola is there for you for that. Now I move on to my last design, a little more traditional. This, as you can see, is really an ornate structure or a design made out of very small buds like this. You cut little from these sheets, you cut a little bit of zigzag and just roll them up. Remember that this material is very brittle right now, but the minute I moisten it with spray a little water, I can really work with it. Then it molds very easily in my hand. You saw in that video where they had continuously and each many buds like this, many, many buds like this have been pasted. It is a cardboard uh, structure that I have used cut out, but this is traditional art. So this again, the artists, you can get the crafts people to do it for you. It gives you an effect of fresh, um, tube rose flowers, which they use, but this is Shola. This has been with me for many years. So you can see how beautiful it looks even now. I can hang it as a backdrop for my festivals, for my celebrations, for so many things. So this is it. So with this, I come to the end of my workshop. I would love to see what designs you all have made. I will invite our illustrious treasurer, Mary Sweeney, <laughs> OAM, to give you some thanks from all of us for what has been a just wonderful period of time. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, Pearl, we have been um, in Kolkata with you today. We have been in India. We have felt so much your joy of the country. Um, you've brought that through our screens today. Um, so unfortunate that you couldn't be with us in person. On behalf of the New South Wales Floral Art Association and workshop participants and observers, I hope that everyone will join me in extending a huge thank you to, to you for sharing your gifts, floral and creative talents in the demonstration workshops this afternoon. Preparing all the designs and the materials, it's just been huge for you. 
Yes, it was disappointing that you could not join us in person. However, it has been wonderful that you could join us virtually. It has been amazing. I can't wait to try out some of your creative ideas, making the paper and screens to start with. For all the many unusual materials you have gathered and sent over from India have been so well received here in Australia and have been a delight to use in the many designs created by participants who joined in the workshops. Thank you to Madhu and the family and her family for individually collating all of the boxes and sending to each of the participants, not a mean task, considering the restraints of COVID, postal strikes and so on. But I understand that there were many oohs and ahs and whoops of delight um, when participants opened up their boxes to the wonderful delight inside. The Shola that you showed us on that film was very interesting, uh, so interesting, and um, it, it, to be able to use that in so many ways. Thank you so much. Thank you once again to all of our participants and observers from many parts of Australia and overseas who have joined us uh, for the Africa Convention, and especially to you, Perul, for sharing your beautiful floral designs today. Mm -hmm. Okay, my pleasure. And I loved sharing it. And I would love to visit your country whenever it is possible. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share my love, my creativity with all of you. Thank you.